Hey man, if you're digging the modern road, you can support us directly by picking up one of three sweet ass t-shirt designs at shop.themodernrogue. You'll find Silverton, Vanguard, and Amendment 21. My favorite, for obvious reasons. It's because I'm al alcoholic. All right, I feel like if I'm gonna be drinking this all the time, I need to know more about it. I mean whiskey. I mean, if only there was a magical wizard's tower with a vice chancellor who was willing to teach us, and it was right behind us. I'm intimidated. Cause I'm a modern bro! Defining whiskey. I feel like we should have swords and like walking up really with does, determination. Right? I'm pointing over here. It's this one, right? Yep, yep. Nicely done, <laughs> sir. Holy cow, Jason. I am unbelievably excited about this. We have Daniel Whittington. Sir. The vice chancellor sir. and co-founder of the Whiskey Marketing School at Wizard Academy. Thank you so much for joining us, man. It is my pleasure. I may cry. <laughs> it's okay, we have Irish whiskey for that. <sighs> am I understanding this correctly? You guys are the very first and currently the only whiskey sommelier program in the world. Officially, yes. Wow. And you get, you get yeah. sweet ass medallions. Yeah, from <laughs> Flavor Flav. How many wishes do you get when you rub that? I haven't capped out yet. Does it deflect so no one, no one knows. <laughs> so what do you learn in the whiskey marketing program? Well, the priority is to help contribute to the community of whiskey drinkers and anti-snobbery and innovation, and then also to teach people how to talk, market, and present and tell stories about whiskey in a way that makes them a lot more money. So you teach people how to be cool drinking whiskey and tell rad stories. That's right, and make more money from it, right. most importantly. Because <laughs> right otherwise, we're just drinking whiskey. So we're in the Whiskey Vault, a hidden room inside a library, inside of a wizard's tower filled yes. with amazing whiskeys. Yes, we passed all of the trials. <laughs> we have slain the Hydra, and now we will take his booze. Where Wait a we, minute. Where do we begin? Walk me through okay. the basics of whiskey. So, let's just talk about what whiskey is first, but we're not gonna do that with empty glass because that's just wildly inappropriate. I like your style. We're gonna try a few things. So I'm pouring you small amounts of whiskey because otherwise we won't make it to the end of the video. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Red Breast 12 Irish Single Malt Whiskey. Cheers to you, gentlemen. Or All as right. they say, a slancha. 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 Mmm. Okay, I'll explain to you later what you're drinking, but let's just talk whiskey first. So whiskey is a generic categorical term like vehicle. So a Hummer is a vehicle. Right. So is a Prius. So whiskey just means grain alcohol aged. How you age it? Depends on the country, how long you age it in requirements. And what grain the country, is negotiable what as grain well? grain changes the name. So okay. the name is gonna change where it's by, based on where it's from or based on what it's being made out of, the name will change. So first let's say American whiskey, and by the way, the E and not E, it has to do with the country of origin. So Scotland was no E. And whiskey just comes from the term uh, uskabetha, which just means water of life right. in Gaelic, right? And so it was shortened to uski and then whiskey, Boy, and it was no E. That's appropriate. It is appropriate. <laughs> I like that. And then uh, the Irish, in order to distinguish their product on the market. That's us. Added an E. <laughs> I forgot that's us. We, we I found oh, out no. I'm Irish recently. We just yeah. added vowel? We are standing, <laughs> you're surrounding an English Scotsman right here. We oh, don't go to right. outright warfare. <laughs> it's, it's We're gonna end in Ireland. combat. <laughs> that's right. E just was added as a marker and marketing differentiator. That's, that's it? it? That's all it is. And so if the country making the whiskey has its origin in Irish whiskey, then they'll add an E. American whiskey adds an E. If it's based in uh, Scottish whiskey, then it's not. Japan, no E. So when you say grain alcohol, is mm -hmm. there a particular type of grain? Is it always? It, any type of grain. Now, traditionally, almost all whiskey is made from four grains, right? The majority of, there's the one-offs doing weird things. But the majority of whiskey is either corn, barley, rye or wheat, or any combination of those four. Now, if it's malt whiskey, it almost always means all barley. Now in America, there's no legal requirement to have all barley in a malt whiskey, but it very often does mean it's all barley. In Scotland, it, if it's a malt, it has to be all barley. Grain whiskey, traditionally in the UK, just means a mix of grains. Okay, not now, a grain. Help me out here because what little I know about this is that uh, when you get alcohol out of that, you know, you're creating ethanol basically, mm -hmm. 
that's that's moonshine. How does it become? It's only called moonshine in America. Okay, it's just it's just yeah. clear alcohol. It's just a right? clear spirit. Looks like vodka. It's we've got some examples of it back here. Just totally clear. It's only when you add age it in wood that it gets all the color. And now different countries have rules on whether you can add things, fake coloring or not. And what type of wood you can use, yep. and so forth. See, that seems remarkable to me. That 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 the flavor and the color of this is just from the wood. It doesn't seem like now wood. Scotland will allow a little bit of caramel coloring. Who's most stringent? American. Well, ironically, America has more strict rules than just about anybody. Really? Yeah. Not on what you can make, mm -hmm. but on what you can call it once you've made it, based on how you made it. And that's enforceable by law, yeah. right? For a while, and this has probably happened with a variety of whiskeys. Things were calling themselves Scotch, mm -hmm. even though they weren't made in Scotland. Oh, yes. yeah, that's no, all let, pre prohibition. All right, let, yeah, let's talk about the words here because you got scotch, I know bourbon is a yeah, thing. Let's hit this. I know, yeah, let's So real quick, the way that you describe remember it was vehicle, whiskey, just means whiskey. Whiskey, right? yeah, got okay. it. So how you call it, it either has to do with where it's from, yep. so scotch can't be called scotch unless it's from Scotland, or it has to do with the grain recipe. Now, distillers will call this a mash bill. A mash bill is a definition of the recipe you use of your proportions of grain. 5% malted barley, 60% corn, and you know 20% rye, so on. So if you have a bourbon, legally, it is at least 51% corn. Okay. Oh. If it's under 51% corn, it can't be called bourbon. So, okay, so if, if, I, if, I, if I'm sorting out all the secret code words, Scotch equals from Scotland, bourbon equals 51% plus And corn. American. Okay, and American. Bourbons are only American. Now, got it. now they are. What's, what's Not up? Kentucky. You can make a bourbon anywhere in the United States, although most people from Kentucky will argue that with you. Not what, true, that's what about, the law though. What about rye? Uh, rye means 51% rye. Right. That's it, so let's try a bourbon. I'm drinking slower than you guys. <laughs> So uh, maybe we should do a different one. This one's 100 proof. We'll do one of my favorite classic bourbons uh, that's totally affordable and, in my opinion, way underpriced. Okay. Way underpriced. Henry McKenna? This is a 10-year-old Henry McKenna, bottled in bond. I'm not going to go into what that means. But that means that this is at least 51% corn. And it's aged, by law, in new charred oak barrels. Here's what little I know. You could buy old barrels that were used to ferment sherry or something wine, or whatever. Wines. Right, yeah, wine. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and then that will color the flavor in a yep. certain way. And, but these are brand new barrels. Well, what kind of barrels? Uh, American oak. Uh, oak, okay, great. So this will taste vaguely oaky, I guess? Yes, cheers right. to you. Oh, yeah. That's just a good bourbon right there. Just yeah. a good, simple, Do you notice the no difference? Frills. Yeah, I definitely detected the higher alcohol content. Now, it's Irish got a little whiskey more traditionally, which we started with, and now remember it's single malt, so that means it's all barley. Single malt means one single, not a blend of grains, but yes. one type of grain. That's how nerdy we're going to get right now. Great, okay, good. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna draw a little sketch that this is a sort of a device I use to understand the five kinds of Scottish whiskey, and it also defines a lot of other whiskey terms at the same time. Okay. So in Scotland, you've got five different kinds of labels that could be on a bottle. You also have five regions of whiskey in Scotland, that's a different thing. So we're just gonna talk about the kinds of Scottish whiskey, right? Now I break it down into mom, dad, and the three kids. So we're gonna say dad, mom, and the three children. Now dad, we're going to call single malt. And that is one type of grain mm -hmm. distilled and then aged in a barrel. That's right. Now in Scotland, it has to be a used barrel, not okay. a new barrel. Now this is an important thing, and I'm gonna do this right here. Single grain, single is not a descriptor of grain. Single malt, single is not an adjective describing malt. There are two words talking about two different things. Oh, single simply means one distillery. Okay. Right? Malt and grain refer to the recipe of grains used to make the whiskey. If it says malt in Scotland, it's all barley. If it says grain, it's a mixture of grains, which is closer to an Irish whiskey or an American whiskey, actually. And the single, so I, I guess I am now learning that you will take uh, alcohols from multiple distilleries and blend them yes. together. That's what blended scotch is. Hey, hey, hey. I can hey. be taught. That was fun watching that realization. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so if you understand that, single grain doesn't mean one grain. Right. It means one distillery grain whiskey. So all we do if we add multiple distilleries is now there's only a three other products. Yep. So here's two kinds of categories. You got a single malt and a single grain. If you have a whiskey that's made up of two dads for equal opportunity, <laughs> then you have now a blended malt, right? The only thing that changed was single and blended. Mm -hmm. If you have two moms, you have a blended grain. And and grain is code for multiple different uh, grains. Grains, yeah. got it. Yeah. 
Uh, if you have a one mom and one dad, you're now a blended scotch, also known as the cheapest category of Scottish whiskey. That's, that's because anything goes. you can basically get it from anywhere you want. No, no, hold on, but it has the word scotch, which it's means- It's still it, made in Scotland. It has to, okay, and got it. And it's still at least three years old in used oak. So that's all you need to know. Now, the terms that we just learned, single and grain and malt, those all apply to a lot of other countries as well, but they're just not as heavily enforced. Like for example, American have a malt whiskey, like Balcones and Waco, and they can do a single malt. Well, they can't call it single malt scotch. It's not from Scotland. Yeah, right. And legally, it's not even required to be 100% barley to be called a single malt. They could have corn in there. They oh, got sure. some wheat to flavor it up, right? Mm -hmm. But but mostly when you find a single malt, it's them doing a Scottish style whiskey in America. Okay. Most of the time. What we just tried now, Ireland, There's, and this is why I described this. Ireland has a very traditional way of making whiskey that's a single pot still and single malts. And then the blended grains came later in history. But one of the things that is a trademark Irish whiskey flavor, which I think is awesome, is a percentage of unmalted barley. And that results in a very unique flavor, shows up, I've only ever experienced it in Irish whiskey. And historically, it was their way to cheat the English tax system. So the English tried to tax them out of existence the same way they did everybody. And they started taxing malted barley. And so the Irish said, well, Screw you. We're going to start using unmalted barley percentages to cut down on the tax liability and make the same amount of whiskey. Okay, unmalted barley means... Now, malted means that you have gone through the process that lets the grain trick it into growing and breaks down the starches. It gets super nerdy. Okay. Right? Unmalted just means you took it straight from the plant and you haven't done just anything but grind it up. Right off the vine, so to yeah. speak. Yeah, if you malt it, it's a process of tricking it into growing and germ and, and cracks its shell Wait, and all, all this stuff. So the Irish just added some, some unprocessed original pieces. That's all it was. Now it results in a really amazing flavor that you got to try in red breast. Okay. But let's talk about rye. All right, uh, uh, yeah, wow, lot, lot to I know, we're, I'm, we're, I'm, we're rocking I'm, in I'm here. I'm getting the words. As a matter of fact, uh, let's talk about rye and then we'll finish with scotch. Okay. Is that fair enough? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. You know what, we're gonna go with whistle pig. So Whistle Pig is made in Vermont. There was a lot of uproar originally because they were sourcing their whiskey from Canada before they were old enough to have bottled and aged their own. Oh, okay. Right. So that was their runway before they could. That's right. Actually now this is very common running. in whiskey distilleries, which is you open today. Well, yeah. What happens when you can't label a straight whiskey straight unless it's four years old? How's that for an outlay? It's like, hey, we opened. When can we have a bottle? Four years. <laughs> wow, I never even thought about right. that because you want to launch a brand, you start right away, and and it's like you already know the flavor profile that you're going for, so yeah. you yes. just buy the right parts from other people. Think or, about how much money it costs you to start up a distillery yeah. because most businesses fail within the first year. You've got to go. Four, you got a million five dollar years. outlay. Wow. Yeah, no big deal. Before so there's two ways that distilleries solve that problem. The first is they make something else, vodka gin, rum, something that they can something age. Something that doesn't have to be oh, aged. aged. Okay. Right, so now you're bringing in capital while you sit on your whiskey. The other way that's, is. That's, that's an old Irish uh, invective. That's yeah. right. Sit on your whiskey. <laughs> that's right. Hey, you, it's like go fly a kite. <laughs> yeah. Go sit on your whiskey. So the other option is you buy already aged whiskey from bulk producers or other distilleries. Mm -hmm. You age them a little bit longer, but not four years. Yeah. Or you age, finish them in a different barrel than they would have originally done it, and then you bottle it and sell it immediately. Now, there's a company called MGP, and this is gonna start a lot of fights. Sorry about this. No, I'm ready. There's a company called MGP that's responsible for about half the bourbon brands on the shelf in the store oh, at any given time. They're like the Budweiser. They're a massive bulk facility. They're amazing. They know exactly what they're doing, and they're creating great whiskey. That's what's gonna start fights. Oh, yeah, everyone because wants to believe. Whiskey snobs will argue to the death that MGP is a, a hellhole of yeah. non-creativity. Like, is there something on the label you would look for? That's another thing that'll start a fight in the comments. <laughs> so, <laughs> legally, they're not re required to say we got ours at MGP, but they do have to say where it was distilled. And MGP is located in Indiana, so you'll see a thing on the back of the bottle that says, distilled in Indiana, Aha. in the heartland of America, or something like that, right? It's code. And what that means is, oh, it's an MGP whiskey. But they're all still different. They're all still different. Okay. The cool thing about MGP is, now here's how I argue with those people. If you go out to dinner at, say, Sullivan's in downtown Austin, you order a steak, are you disappointed that you didn't raise and kill and then butcher that steak yourself? Uh, no. Right? Are I you disappointed that Sullivan's didn't do it? Yeah, no. It's like, hey, Sullivan's, this steak is not legitimate yeah. because you didn't raise it 
kill it and butcher it for me first. I want to see the chef come out with a <laughs> giant <laughs> scimitar. Just blood yeah. all up his hands. He's like, how is your steak? It's fresh. <laughs> That's right. He put up a noble fight. It was a good death. <laughs> I lost two life <laughs> wielding a rapier. <laughs> exactly. Do you need more mashed potatoes? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So wait. So thing. while we drink this, this is rye whiskey, which means it's at least fifty-one percent rye. Got it. This is now. Uh, now Whistle Pig is doing everything in one location: growing the grain. Harvesting the grain, making the whiskey, aging it in barrels they made. And the made. benefit of all that is that you get a more consistent product and that your brand is stronger because everyone knows local, exactly what you're doing. And you expect. appeal to purists. And yes. you get featured on Portlandia. Uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Notice the kind of this black pepper so spicy Yeah, notes. it's so yeah. smooth. Mm -hmm. This one doesn't have the kick uh, or the bite of that last one that we did. Yeah, it's a little sweeter. A lot of bourbons will use a higher percentage of rye grain to mellow out the corn. Okay. Right, so you get a high rye bourbon. And all high rye means is the next most grain was rye. It's funny because uh, the, the second one was a lot more smooth than the first one. Oh, I just agree. Mm -hmm. That first, yeah. what, that that hundred proof one was the second one. That, yeah. that one, that, that was, one. Making, it was a little punchy. I think the Irish was smoother. Really? But okay. this is my favorite thing about whiskey, is it's so subjective that you can have completely different opinions, and everyone is absolutely right. And, yeah. And this one is uh, definitely sweeter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, Thank you, Whistlepig. That's smooth. Smooth. Okay. This we're gonna end with and call it a day. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Yeah. All right. Wait. Hold on. This is a way for you to understand. It. Were you listening? I was. I was. This uh, is a blended malt scotch called Monkey Shoulder. Okay. So. What does that um, mean? Uh, it mean? Blended means it came from multiple distilleries. Yep. So you, you bought a bunch of alcohol and got a mix that tasted the way they wanted it to taste. Malt uh, means it was barley. Yep. 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 And uh, uh, scotch means this comes from Scotland, mm -hmm. right? Now wait a minute. And you know it's at least three years old. Oh, and it, and sure enough, whiskey is spelled without an e. That's because it came right. from Scotland. Yeah. Okay, good. Boy, man, Scotch whiskey with an E, like that just screams counterfeit now. It does. Now I know. Have you seen one? <laughs> no. You, you have really it. rude friends. <laughs> I got you this amazing present, Ryan. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Scotch whiskey, it's Scotch. Shh. Oh, with an just X. Say, man, yeah. come on. Let's. Yeah. Uh, some of us are on a limited budget. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. So just right. enjoy right. blended malt Scotch, sort of a butterscotch finish. Light smoke and let's be friends. Uh, what, what's the thing you said? Sriracha? S Sriracha. Cilantro? Cilantro? You yeah. animal! <laughs> You're not Irish. Wait, 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 wait. He just found out. Yeah. <laughs> did. Literally, like, literally a couple last week. He's still a wee baby Irish. <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. It's slancha. 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 Yeah. And, and what does that mean? It means basically health to your okay. health. Slancha. Yes. Slancha. To your health, Slancha. dummy. <laughs>